Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we will go into detail and discuss the different types of methods that can be used for boundary layer mesh generation using the add boundary layers task in the ANSYS Fluent Meshing Water Ride Geometry Workflow. Let's get started. By now, we know the definitions and the role of various inputs in the add boundary layers task. Please refer to the previous lesson in this course if you need a refresher. Now, let us look at the offset methods which use these inputs to determine the boundary layer mesh generation. Launch ANSYS Fluent in meshing mode. Go to File, Read and select Mesh and then pick the provided mesh file. Once Fluent finishes reading the file, you will notice that the watertight geometry workflow has been automatically set up and all the tasks till the update regions task have already been successfully completed. The model we have here is that of a generic ball or check valve, which consists of one solid region, that is the pipe geometry, and three fluid regions, that is the inlet pipe region, the valve region, and the outlet pipe region. The ball valve is considered as a void in the model. Let us now go to the add boundary layers task and look at the offset method type. The default option is smooth transition. It is the most robust and useful for most of the applications. This method requires the number of layers, transition ratio, and growth rate parameters as inputs. Using the formula shown here, the height of the last layer of the boundary layer mesh is calculated at each node of the surface mesh based on the average edge length of the local base surface mesh triangle and the transition ratio. Using this value, the height of the first layer is then computed using the formula shown here. In this method, the boundary layer mesh thickness and the first layer height vary along the surface depending on the local surface mesh size to establish a smooth rate of volume change between the boundary layer mesh and the volume mesh, which is a major advantage of this method. However, on the downside, it is not possible to directly control the first layer height or the absolute total height of the boundary layer mesh. Let's look at this method in action on our demo problem. In the add boundary layers task, make sure that the offset method type is set to smooth transition. Leave all other settings to default and click on add boundary layers. Then go to generate the volume mesh task and without changing the default options, click on generate the volume mesh button. Once the volume mesh has been generated, we can turn on the clipping plane and visualize an X cut of our geometry. Notice that the local boundary layer thickness and the first cell height vary along the length of the pipe in accordance with the variation in the surface mesh size. This effect is vividly seen in the valve region, especially near the pipe corners. The next method we will look at is last ratio. Here, the first layer height is given as input and is maintained wherever the boundary layer mesh is created. Additionally, by defining the transition ratio, a smooth transition is ensured between the boundary layer mesh and the volume mesh. The only downside to this method is that the growth rate between the layers is automatically varied to satisfy other inputs. As a result, the boundary layer thickness varies along the surface. Here is an image of the valve section of our geometry with the boundary layer created using the last ratio method. Note that the default first cell height as computed by fluent meshing was used for generating this mesh. Relative to the smooth transition method, also shown here, one can notice how the first layer thickness is constant everywhere. Let's now look at the next method, 
that is the uniform method. This method depends on the growth rate and the first height inputs to generate the boundary layer mesh such that the thickness of each layer remains the same anywhere in the domain. A major factor that determines the boundary layer mesh uniformity in this method is the direction vector at each node. For flat surfaces or relatively lightly curved surfaces, a uniform thickness can be easily maintained. However, at sharp corners such as 90 degree bends, this method can lead to the creation of crevices. This is because the direction vector at a 90 degree corner will be at a 45 degree angle while the vectors at the adjacent nodes will be slightly more orthogonal to their faces. Since the distance is calculated along the vector, even though the absolute value is the same, a pinching effect that appears to reduce the layer thickness at corners is noticed. This effect can be clearly seen in this image of the valve region of our geometry. At all other areas, the boundary layer first height and the thickness are uniform. However, at the corners of the valve region, the pinching effect is easily noticeable. A severe limitation of this method is that the volume change between the boundary layer mesh and the volume mesh cannot be directly controlled. Consequently, a few iterations of mesh generation may be required, which might not be practical for large models. The last method we will look at is the aspect ratio method. Here, only the first aspect ratio and growth rate inputs are required to define the boundary layer mesh. The aspect ratio is defined as the ratio of the local surface mesh size to the height of the first cell of the boundary layer mesh. As the surface mesh size changes around the model, the first cell height is subsequently modified to maintain the user-defined aspect ratio as can be seen from this image. The major drawback of this method is the lack of control on the first layer height and the total height of the boundary layer mesh. Let's summarize. In this lesson, we discussed four different offset methods available for creating the boundary layer mesh when using the ANSYS Fluent Meshing watertight geometry workflow. We discussed some of the nuances of these methods while shedding light on the advantages and disadvantages of each of these methods. It is generally considered a best practice to avoid large cell jumps between the last boundary layer mesh and the core volume mesh, which consequently determines the choice of the offset method. That brings us to the end of this lesson.